This house that you guys are looking at right behind me, we actually walked past here about a month and a half ago. And last time we did, the house was actually for sale for 1,199,000. So basically 1.2 million. And basically what the story is with this house is they bought this house back in January of 2022 for 700,000, okay? They remodeled the entire house, it looks like in the pictures at least, and then they relisted the home in May for $1,345,000, did a couple of price cuts down to $1.2 million, couldn't sell it guys all this time from May until basically October when they took it off the market and what did they do next? They tried to rent it and talk about desperation guys, here's a couple of things you need to look at. First of all, they put the place for rent on September 12th, which was not that long ago, for $8,500, okay? Fast forward to the end of October, they lowered the rental price to $6,500, and now the property is completely off the market. It's not for sale, it's not for rent, apparently. And the funny thing about this is they still have the sign in the yard, as you can see, and so Obviously, the real estate agent is probably still taking leads. If somebody drives by and calls about this house, they'll probably still rent it or sell it. But what's happening, guys? This is basically the perfect way to start today's video to basically show you what's going on today in the housing market. You're going to see all kinds of games like this happen in the near future. And you know, the, the reason why I wanted to bring this up is because I've been wanting to do follow-ups on these listings and this is the perfect one to start at. And why is that? Well, one of my viewers uh, just a few videos ago, Tony, he told me about one of his relatives that was looking at buying a house and they weren't really checking the history of the house to see, you know, what it was actually listed for before, the history of price cuts, what the previous owner bought it for, nothing like that. And they said, oh, the market's not going down enough. It was only a $10,000 price cut. And he's like, yeah, but look at the history. Turns out they lowered the price like 50 grand uh, to where it is now and they still can't sell it. And I think he's in Arizona, he said. So, you're going to see all kinds of games like this, guys, and that's basically the very first tip of today's video. If you are out there in the market right now, if you want to avoid getting scammed, you need to be checking the listing information, the listing history. How much did the current owner pay for the property? Okay, that's important. Um, is it a flip? Are they trying to turn around and sell it within a matter of months just like that place? Did they actually do any work to make it justified? you know asking the higher price how many price cuts have they had that's a pretty good way to judge how desperate the current owner is especially with the rent guys i mean look at that having the rent go down two thousand dollars in the matter of a month and then still not being able to rent it is pretty insane if you ask me i mean that is that just has desperation written all over it in my opinion so as the housing market is starting to tank i guarantee you're going to see more and more listings just like the one we just looked at and that can actually be a very good opportunity for you but then of course the question is will the current owner sell it for a reasonable price now i don't know exactly what a reasonable price would be you know probably somewhere in the middle of what they were actually asking and that 700 that they paid for depending on how much work they actually did to the property and one thing that we can look at right now is just how much home prices across the nation are literally dropping off a cliff right now if we look at redfin's median home price data of the listings that have been sold it is truly shocking guys from the middle of june until right now in october home prices have literally fallen about eight percent and these are the sold prices we're talking about how much houses are actually selling for so once again i always have to say that of course the metrics and the numbers that you're going to see are going to be different depending on where you live and to me that is a huge sign that the market is completely turned around already and we are already in deceleration mode guys the, the market is completely falling off a cliff and just looking at that graph you can just tell that the trajectory is completely going down and i don't see anything that can reverse this at the moment a lot of people are always saying oh the fed's gonna pivot well guess what guys even once they do pivot it's gonna be a while before things turn around it's not like magic where 
they're just going to start lowering rates again and everything's going to turn around. No. If we look at the last housing crash, after they did a pivot, things were still spiraling down after that. So it's kind of like it's too late once they do the pivot, you know? So they, it doesn't really matter if they pivot at the beginning of next year or whatever because the damage has already been done, so to speak. So the, the, the housing market has already been put into motion to go in this downward direction right now. And truly right now, the only thing that's completely preventing the market from falling off a cliff even more than it is, is the fact that uh, the amount of new listings is actually going down as well. So fewer people are putting their homes on the market over these past few months as well. And even that's not enough to stop these price decreases. Imagine if we saw inventory continuing to rise at the levels that we did over the past couple years with this type of downward momentum in the market, we would probably already be seeing prices down by double that, maybe by 15% or so. And remember guys, we have a lot of new construction inventory that's gonna be coming to market over the next several months and into next year. We also haven't even felt any of the economic pain that's going to come from this recession and the interest rate hikes and the inflation that's going to force a lot of people to sell that normally would not need to sell in an environment like this. Think of the people that say, oh, I have a 3% rate, I'll never sell. Well, that's great until you can't make the mortgage payment, you know? So that's kind of the situation that we're looking at. We don't really know how many people are gonna be affected and how many people are gonna be able to weather this coming storm. So it's kind of anyone's guess right now. When you look at the statistics of the savings rates going down to you know basically record lows, and we look at things like people can't afford a $600 emergency, all these statistics, uh, the odds don't seem to be in favor too much of the average American when it comes to being able to weather uh, a significant downturn for a prolonged period of time, essentially. And as you guys can see, we got the wind picking up out here. We got Tropical Storm Nicole, soon to be maybe Hurricane Nicole, barreling towards Florida. And let me just tell you guys, for anybody that has been thinking about moving to Florida, you know, I see a lot of people in the comments and people that write me that they want to move here. Just know that this is a yearly thing, guys. Almost not a single year goes by where there's not some sort of threat of a hurricane coming to our area. I mean, it's basically every year. And last year, I think right around this time in uh, November, close to Thanksgiving, actually, we had Hurricane Etta come this way. It wasn't a hurricane. I think it was a very strong tropical storm which is kind of similar to this system that's moving in here now. And they do come this late in the season. Luckily, this is not going to be uh, a Hurricane Ian type of event. But, you know, when you have 75 mile an hour wind, still does some damage. And this thing's supposed to drop a lot of rain too, which means flooding. So this is just something you have to deal with. It's a fact of life living down here. And uh, if you can't handle that, then it's probably not the right place for you. Now let's look at a couple other statistics here. If we look at the amount of listings with price cuts, it's absolutely skyrocketing. That's definitely happening. And here's a really interesting dynamic that's happening right now. If you look at the amount of new listings, it's down about 20% year over year. So like I said, less people are starting to list their homes for sale. But at the same time, the weeks of supply on the market are up. How is that possible? That sounds like an anomaly, right? How can you have more weeks of supply of listings on the market when less people are listing? Sounds contradicting, right? Well, it's not that hard, guys. Guess what it is? It is the lack of buyer demand. The amount of buyers out there has completely disappeared because people cannot afford to buy at the current prices combined with the current interest rates. And that's just the fact of life right now. And it's the main reason why we're able to see this anomaly happening in the housing market. And the crazy thing is, this is just the beginning. That's what I keep telling everyone. I keep hammering this on my channel. This whole downturn is just beginning, guys. This is the infancy stages of this thing. And we're already seeing massive uh, data points like this. So who knows what this is gonna look like in a year from now, two years from now. It's gonna get interesting, that's for sure. And you know, because there's so much uncertainty right now in the housing market, it's just an extra reason of why I personally like silver and gold, guys. I like things that are 
time tested and proven. You know, the, the reality is, and the fact is, that gold and silver has been money for over 5,000 years of human history, and it still is money. Now, it's not traded as a currency like the US dollar or the euro or anything else, but it used to be back in the day, and we used to have all of our dollars in the US backed up by gold. You know, just, just as far back as 1971, that used to be the case, and it no longer is. And look what happened to our money. It's becoming worthless because it's not backed by gold anymore. And so, in times like this, when everything is so uncertain, I really enjoy being an owner of physical gold and silver because it's like a safety net. That's kind of how I see it. It's one of those assets that has never gone to zero. It's something that has never been worthless over these past 5,000 years. So it's something that I trust and you can count on. And when the economy is tough like this and times are so uncertain, it makes sense to own some gold and silver for yourself. If you wanna buy physical metals, you can either hang on to them yourself, you can pay for storage, or you can put them in a gold and silver backed IRA and you can do all of this with Lear Capital. If you want to learn more about how this works, more about buying gold and silver, give Lear Capital a call at 1-800-601-5430 or use my link down in the description below, learmb.com and they'll be able to set you up with a decent gold and silver purchase and hopefully owning some physical metals will give you a little bit of peace of mind in such uncertain times. Speaking of uncertain times and another uh, huge warning sign that the housing market is being turned upside down right now, check this out guys. The Home Flipper Open Door literally lost $1 billion in the third quarter of 2022. That is astonishing. And let's not forget, a lot of that is other people's money. You know, Open Door is a publicly traded company, which means people have invested in their company via the stock market, and their share prices are down over 90% this year, guys. So imagine if you had a lot of money in Open Door stock last year, you've literally lost 90% of your money betting on the housing market that everything is going to be beautiful and everything's going to continue going up and that bet has completely backfired on anyone taking that bet including the company open door and it's so bad that they're saying that these guys are basically in the same situation that zillow was and they're in a warning territory where you know these people could potentially go out of business from this i think a lot of you would probably root for that right probably a lot of people want to see a company like like open door go out of business because it's companies like them that have caused all this pain and all this run up in the housing market it's the reason why uh, home prices went up so fast all that along with regular buyers buying up homes at you know record low interest rates here's what the ceo said about this he said navigating a once in 40 years market transition has required us to operate with urgency and discipline to manage risk and overall inventory health so did you hear what he said in the beginning once in a 40 year market transition that's how big this is so do the math guys 40 years ago was a long time we're talking early 1980s and the next 40 years from now is going to be 2062 2063 so that could be the next time that something this big and this scale could happen in the housing market so that's what i've been trying to explain to everybody that there's so much opportunity coming from this and it's because we're at the infancy stages of this you know Anyone who's been patient, anyone who has been watching my videos is probably going to do pretty well in this housing crash. And check this out, there was a local study in Denver, Colorado of what happened with Open Door over there. And between June 1st and October 21st, Open Door sold 36 homes in Denver and 19 out of those 36 homes, they sold for less than they paid for it. And it gets worse than that because here's one example. They bought one home for $779,000 on April 20th, okay? And then they sold the house six months later. So let's first, before we even talk about what they sold it for, six months, guys, it took them to sell this house again. And hanging on to a vacant property for six months 
is devastating to a home flipper. No home flipper wants to go through that. Just like the person we looked at earlier in the video, they're going through the same thing. You know, they got this empty house since the beginning of the year that they're making no money on. In fact, every single month that place is empty, they're losing money. They're losing money via property taxes. They're losing money via utilities to keep the place you know, with electricity and running water. They're losing money in lost rent by keeping the place vacant. And they're losing money right now in depreciation because the value of the home is also going down. And so every single financial aspect that these home flippers can be attacked right now, they're being attacked on all fronts. And so this house that they bought for 779K in April, they sold it six months later for 625. And that was a $154,000 loss, minus any of the costs that they actually paid to get the home ready for sale, because they do minor things like touch up and paint and a few little cosmetic things to make the home look slightly nicer than it was a lot of times than when they first bought it. But it's not a full on flip, that's for sure. And according to this report, 62% of the $1 billion that they lost is just due to home values going down. That's more than half, guys. They have lost $573 million in home values going down. So that is insane. I mean, it's just staggering when you think about it. I mean, I can't even believe the number. And that's just one company. We're not talking about other home flippers here, private home flippers or investors. Just one company, Open Door. That's it. And it says in August, just in August this year, they lost money on 42% of their transactions. So obviously this company is not very good at making money and I don't see how in the world they're going to attract future investors or how they're going to recover from this because the trust is gone if you ask me. You know, these guys thought they had a miracle plan to, you know, make all this money in the housing market and meanwhile putting regular people out that can't actually buy and now karma is coming full circle and you know these guys are basically getting what they deserve and because of all this open door last week announced that they're going to be laying off like 18 percent of the people that work there and that's about 550 people and i'm pretty sure it's probably going to just continue to get worse than that from here since the company is just hemorrhaging money right now but the ceo is saying oh you know, we're still in a good position to take advantage of, uh, you know, when things come back and all of this. Like, what? <laughs> things aren't coming back for a while, man. And because of all these things that we've covered so far in this video, the next thing that we can expect to see is more layoffs coming to the housing and construction industry in general over the next several months. And we haven't seen too many of them yet. But the big one that we've seen so far is mortgage lenders. And you know, we've, saw, we've, we've seen it now from Zillow. We've seen it now from Open Door. And Wells Fargo next is looking at chopping maybe 2,000 of their uh, mortgage loan officers. Like everywhere you look around, guys, if you're related to the banking or housing industry, probably even real estate companies as well that have paid salary positions are probably going to be looking at layoffs too. We've seen already a bunch of layoffs come in the tech sector, you know, Elon Musk laying off a bunch of people at Twitter. It's everywhere. And then Facebook is coming next. You know, it's very unclear of just how many layoffs could be coming in the near future. And that's why we've just been talking on this channel that the, the better prepared you are for a potential layoff with an emergency fund and having the good credit and no debt, the better off you're going to be able to weather a layoff and hopefully get a new job and, and just be able to recover from this situation better than most people who are just oblivious right now and thinking that everything's going to be fine and you know nothing's going to happen essentially. Because I, I see them all the time in the comments. I'm sure you guys too. There's a lot of deniers out there. People that think everything is going beautiful right now. And, you know, they're going to be the ones in for the biggest pain, unfortunately. And one interesting theory from this article about why we haven't seen that many layoffs just yet is because after the pandemic, it was very difficult to rehire people that they had to let go, right? You know, we saw... A lot of people lose their job at the early stages of the pandemic and then we saw a huge uptick in remote work 
people re relocating to different areas and a lot of times even transitioning into new lines of work and what that did is it completely changed the work landscape and so now companies that had a very difficult time bringing on new employees during the run-up which is why we saw this record low unemployment and all these job openings they're more hesitant than you know previous recessions to let these people go because they they understand how hard it is to bring them back if they need to and so the good thing about this is a lot of these companies that might be looking at layoffs hopefully they're going to be using layoffs as the very last resort when it comes to uh, the company's bottom line because they understand how difficult it is to find good help so at least everyone if, if who watches these videos if you know you bring good value to your company and you do a good job and you were one of those people that was a highly skilled and highly valuable worker that was able to get a better job during the pandemic and all of this then hopefully you'll at least have a better chance of not losing your job and if you do hopefully there'll be another company out there that can see the value that you bring to the table very quickly so that way you don't go that long without having a job if you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it make sure you hit the bell notification below this video and youtube will alert you every time i put out a new upload and if you don't want to wait for the new one check out my last video on the screen right over here and i'll see you in the next one